My dear brothers and sisters here at Holy Cross, we're now in the fourth video of Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, and we're still uh, not even halfway, we're even a third of the way through uh, chapter one. I know you're probably wondering, how long is this going to take to get all the way through the Romans? Well, you know, I don't know when the coronavirus is gonna be over, and I don't know when this video series is gonna be over either. So buckle up, uh, stay tuned, and keep watching because we got a lot of stuff to cover with Paul's letter to the Romans. All right, so we're gonna start with verse nine of, of chapter one. And in verse nine of chapter one, uh, Paul says, for God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his son, is my witness that without ceasing, I remember you always in my prayers, asking that by God's will, I may somehow at last succeed in coming to you. All right, so there's a lot there to unpack. And part of what he's saying is, he says, first of all, for God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his son. Now, remember what we said at the beginning, verse one, two, and three, who Paul is. He's telling them once again, uh, I, I'm a servant of God, all right? I'm not doing this on my own. So listen up. This is really God at work here, working in and through Jesus Christ, who's working in and through me. So this is not just flight of fancy. I'm not writing you a grocery list here. I'm not just saying something flip here. You need to listen up. So he goes on. Well, what is he doing? Well, with his spirit, kind of deep in his soul, he is announcing the gospel of God's son. Right there. Hey, listen up. It's my job to preach the good news to you to preach the good news, whether I want to preach the good news, or really, quite frankly, whether you want to hear the good news, I've got to preach the good news. I've got to announce the good news of Jesus Christ. He says, For God is my witness that without ceasing, I remember you always in my prayers. In other words, you Romans, you don't realize this. You may not realize this, but each and every day I am always praying for you. I am praying for you because you are gathering in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, because you are the body of Christ, because you are that community of thanksgiving that gathers to be the self-offering of Jesus Christ in your body, in your souls. I pray for you because you are doing God's very work by gathering as the body of Christ. Well, what is he praying for them? Well, what he's really praying for them, he says right here, asking that by God's will, I may somehow at last succeed in coming to you. Well, yes, Paul wants to get to them in his very flesh or blood. But what he's really saying is, I want to see you because I want to see how the body of Christ is incarnated in Rome in how you live out your Christian faith individually and communally as the body of Christ. I want to see how Jesus is alive there in Rome in your community. Well, Paul goes on in verse 11 and he says, for I am longing to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, or rather, so that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. This is really important here, especially in this time of the coronavirus. Paul is saying to them, I am longing to see you so that I may share my spiritual gift with you so that I might encourage you with my spiritual gift. Now, you see, he didn't say, look, I have this really cool trick, like I juggle five balls at one time, and I think it would be so cool if you got to see me juggle all these balls at one time, and then you could all uh, puff up my ego. No, that is not what this is about. 
What he is saying is, I have a spiritual gift that I think would encourage you in being the body of Christ. I have a spiritual gift that can help you be better who you're called to be as the body of Christ. Now, and Paul also will say something really profound here. It's not just that he's coming to them to, to encourage them, but that when he gets there, they will encourage him, that they'll share his gifts with him. In other words, this is a mutual interdependence. No one Christian has all the gifts. Paul loves to tell each and every one of his communities that they need one another. And Paul is saying here, not only do you need each other in your communities, but you need me and I need you. Without you, I can't be a Christian as I'm called to be by God. And without me, you all can't hear the good news as you would like to hear it, as you are called to hear it. So, as we move on to chapter thir uh, verse 13, Paul says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented in order that I may reap some harvest among you as I have among the rest of the Gentiles. What Paul is saying there is, when I bring good news to people, it might seem a little selfish, but I like to see when people are on fire with the grace of God, when people are living out the genuine life of what it means to be Christian. I love seeing that. I want to experience some of that good feeling when as an evangelist, I get to see people who I have preached to living the gospel life of Jesus Christ. Part of what he's also saying is no one can do Christianity in isolation. Just as he said in verses 11 and 12, I need you and you need me. We can't be the body of Christ unless we are working together, sharing our gifts. Now, in any one particular Christian community, like here at Holy Cross or, or like at Good Shepherd over uh, on the other side of Tryon or, or, or even far, far away like St. James up in Hendersonville or Trinity up in, in Asheville, we, we might say, well, we don't really need those people over there. I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of pain in the butt for, for us to kind of have to always acknowledge them. But Paul says, no, 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 no. Those are your brothers and sisters in Christ over there. And you might not see them on a regular basis each and every Sunday, but don't you forget that you need them, whether you might think so or not. Each member of the body of Christ needs each and every other member of the body of Christ. And that does not just mean that you need people in Rome, he's telling them. You need people all over the world. You need everybody who confesses Jesus Christ as Lord as your brother and sister in Christ. Without them sharing their gifts, guess what? We're not fully living into what it means to be disciples of Jesus. Now, as much as I was talking about Good Shepherd or St. James or, or, or Trinity in Asheville, that's, the same is true with our brothers and sisters on each side of us. The Congregational Church over here and the Baptist Church over on the other side of us. We need them too. We need all of these people. And Paul would say, do not forget that you need me and do not forget that I need you and that we share in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. And when we share together in that fellowship, we become exponentially more of what we are called to be than any of us could be by ourselves. Paul goes on and he says in verse 14, I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Hence my eagerness to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. In other words, what he's saying to them is this, 
There are no outsiders. You might think that the Greeks think they're better than you or that you're better than the Greeks or that somehow those barbarians on the other side of the world are not as good as you. No, everyone who preaches, who, who proclaims Jesus as Lord is a brother and sister just like anybody else in Christ. Do not forget that even if you're not in the room with your other brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, guess what? They're there with you. My brothers and sisters, we will pick up and continue next week, starting with verse 16 of the first chapter of Romans. Amen and God bless.